Well, this morning we're continuing in a mini two-part series. I don't know that we knew it was a series, but Pastor Bam and I decided it would be, I guess. And so it's a two-parter. Pastor Bam had the first one. I get the second uh, part, second leg of this. And so if you recall last week, if you were here, if you weren't, you need to get on the app and watch it. But last week, Pastor Bam talked about the tabernacle. And what he did is he showed the tabernacle and different levels of praise. And I would say there's ways of going deeper in praise and worship into the presence of God. And so he showed us uh, the temple and that there's the outer, inner, and the holy of holies. And so this morning we're going to continue. We're going to continue talking about those levels and, and uh, going through the different courts this morning. And so the message is entitled, Canopy of Praise and Worship. Hallelujah. Wow, God is good. And so as we're getting started, I want to lay down a little bit of a foundation, though. We might uh, review a little bit of what Pastor brought last week in his message, uh, but that's okay. Sometimes we need to hear things twice, right? That way it settles in. And so we're going to go over a few things a little bit because what we want to do is we may make sure that we know how to enter in and cultivate the presence of the living God. Because God is an omniscient, omnipresent God. That means that God is everywhere at every time. That means there's no place that you can go where his presence is not. David said, whether I go into hell or wherever I go, Lord, your presence is there. You can't get away. You can't run from the presence of God. So God's presence is over all of his creation. Okay, but that presence is like out in the world too, the unsaved and the saved. So his presence is there. But that's not the desire of God. What God desires is to be an intimate present with you. Not to be in the external, but in the internal, into your heart. And so we talked about going from the external into the internal. From the outer court, maybe even not even there. We're out in the world out there, right? In the crowd, in the throng of people. But that's not where God wants you. He wants to bring you into that inner court. He wants to bring you to the altar. He wants to bring you to the holy of holies. And so today, that's uh, kind of what we're going to talk about. There's the external, but there's the intimate presence of God, the internal. And so this morning, he wants us to move there. Move from the external into the internal intimacy. From the world to that third level that Pastor talked about, his presence. The holy of holies, that intimate presence. That we wouldn't worship from afar but that we would draw ever closer to the King of kings, the Lord of lords, my mighty God. But there are things that hinder us from being in his presence. There are two that I want to talk about. One is sin. Sin hinders us. It blocks us from entering into the presence of God. The other one is mistrust. Mistrust. When we're not trusting, it hinders us. And so first of all, let's talk about that first part, sin. Well, even before we go there, you know, worship is wonderful, isn't it? There's the melody and the song and the words, but you know, that's not the worship. The worship is our heart. It has to come from the inner being of our heart deep within us. That's what worship is. It's not the lyrics. It's not the melody. It's the condition of the heart. A heart set on God. A heart broken before Him. A heart that desires only the Savior. That's what worship is. It's about God. It's not about us. It's not about music. It's not about tunes. It's about His presence. His presence. So we go. We enter in, right? Pastor, last week he talked about the altar. Right, that that's in the inner or the outer court. So we start at the altar, at the outer court. And we enter there, and what's there? It's the altar is there. But pastor said, what is that? It's not a clean place. It's a dirty place. It's a place where sins are atoned for. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of the blood of Jesus being shed. Animals were shed as a type of what Jesus would do on the cross. We have to enter into his presence through that 
court, through the outer court, to the altar, because we have to deal with sin, the sin that separates us from him. Jesus says this, that I have come that I might bring many into the kingdom. And how does he do that? He does that through his own very shed blood, the blood he shed on the cross. Jesus says this, if you confess your sins, I'll forgive you. He says that in John. So we can deal with our sin. We can come to the altar. We can depend on and trust God that he's going to pay and did pay for our sin and he could cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We have to deal with that. We have to be like David. You know, David, the great psalmist, he said, search me, O God. And know if there be any wicked way about me, anything unpleasing to you, anything that I hasn't been dealt with, Lord, deal with it. Show the magnifying glass of my heart and show me what isn't pleasing to you. We need to come to the altar and ask God to search our hearts that we can become clean and cleansed so we can move from that altar knowing the forgiveness of Christ, boldly going into the next level of worship we need to progress we progress from the outer court to the inner court so that's one sin needs to be dealt with you can't come into the presence of god in your sin my mom put it this way she said you can't come into this clean house with your dirty boots on right can't come into the presence of a holy god without being cleansed and letting him purify our hearts. God's house is the same as my mom's. You can't come in dirty booted. You can't be walking in the world and enter into his presence, that, that intimacy that he desires to have with you. Secondly, the issue we need to deal with is trust. Or we could say belief or faith, right? The Bible says this, that it's impossible to please God without what? Without faith. You can't please God without faith. You need to have faith in Him and faith of what He's done for you on the cross. Faith that He died for your sins. Faith that that's payment enough. It was enough what He did. Faith that He's a good God. That he's willing and can and is able and will meet your every need. You need to have faith in that. Believe that. So where does faith come from? It comes from the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the what? The word of God. We need to be in his presence in the word of God. It builds up our most holy faith in a most holy God. You know, the more that we grow in our trust of God, the deeper intimacy we can have with Him. The more we know Him, the closer we want to be to Him. The more we trust Him, the more we can be in His presence. If there isn't trust, you know, if we don't trust someone, how can we be intimate with that person? We need to trust them. Believe in who He is. Believe that His heart is for good and not for evil. That we could have a hope in him. That he is our Lord and Savior and no good gift would he ever withhold from us. We need to go deeper in our walk with Jesus. It's through worship. It's entering into his presence. God has called us. He's a holy God. And he's called us to be a holy people. He's coming back soon. And he's coming back for a bride, the church, that is spotless and pure, not for a soiled bride. One whose garments is washed in the blood. Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he calls us to be a holy people. Holy people. 
So just a quick uh, sidebar about holiness. Notice I said holy, not perfect. Christ is perfect, but he calls us to holiness. Being holy is living a life, having a heart and a mind and a body that is genuinely separated unto God. It's separated unto his purpose. It's for him. It's his. Holiness is when the Lord reigns in every area of our life. It's a life lived apart from the world, apart from our flesh, apart from the devil and his schemes and his enticements. It's not perfect. It's separated and surrendered. Wow. Are you quiet out there? God is a God of joy too. All right. So now we can start the sermon. That was just the prelogue or or whatever, right? God is good and uh, he's got a word. So So as a reminder, because we've gone here a little bit, the canopy of praise and worship is the title of this sermon. And on the top of your notes this morning, you're going to find there from uh, Psalm 22, verse 3, it's written, yet you are holy, O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. So the first part of this verse, we see that what? That God is what? Holy. The second part of this verse says this, that he is enthroned. You know, he's the king of kings, he's the Lord of lords, and he sits on a throne. He's enthroned. This scripture says that he's enthroned on our praise. So circle the word enthroned. Let's take just a moment, a look at that word and what it means, enthroned. In this particular passage, it means to dwell, to sit, to inhabit, to live, to stay. So what is it saying? It says on our praises, on our worship, that God is enthroned on them, that he stays there, that he's dwelling there. He's living on our very praise and worship. He's present We could read this verse another way by replacing enthroned with dwelling. You are holy, you who are dwelling in the praises of Israel. The King James Version actually puts it this way. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So the Lord inhabits the praises, the worship of his people. He dwells in his people's praises. He dwells in their worship. He lives there. He stays there. He's present there. I was putting this uh, sermon together, and and, uh, I just had a picture of a firework. And so how many of you got fireworks for your kids this fourth? You go out and get some fireworks. Come on, that's, you know, celebrate the fourth. Yeah, so I did when I was a, uh, a younger man with our kids were younger. And so you know what a cone is? What a fountain firework is? Yeah, no. So it's a small firework. It's shaped like a cone, right? And you light it and you back up because it shoots all these sparks way up into the air, right? And it comes down and it completely covers the cone. Well, that's what our praises are like. Our praises shoot up into the heavens, shoot up into the, to the throne room, and then God covers us with his presence. He inhabits, just like those sparkles coming down, he's covering us, covering us all around like an umbrella, like a canopy. But you know, God also, he's not, that's, that's like the individual, right? Like I'm an individual firework and shooting up and God's covering me. But Lord, well, how about when we all meet today? How about this morning, as we corporately are lifting up praise and worship? How many went out and looked outside the 4th of July, the canopy of fireworks that covered the night sky? That's our God covering us. When we lift up praise and worship corporately, He's here in our midst. He's in our presence. He's a covering, a canopy over us. Get the visual, the picture of that? His presence covers us like a canopy all around. 
whether it's singly, singularly, <laughs> or corporately, <laughs> he surrounds us. He surrounds us. You know, it's uh, in our worship time. So this morning we gave offerings, right? That's worship. You know that God covers that with his presence? We were worshiping with uh, the worship team. God's covering that with his presence. There's the word of God that God covers. When we're studying his word at this moment, the living God is here present covering us. He covers us. He covers our prayer time. He covers us. That's worship. When we're coming before the Lord and petitioning of Him, that's worshiping Him. Because we're seeking Him. His provision. His presence. His heart. As we're lifting up our praise and worship together, there's a canopy of His presence covering over us. So point number one. Praise and worship lifts God's presence as a canopy. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, we're told that God's presence went before the children of Israel, that he went before them as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And it was the manifest presence of God, tangible, touchable, seen. In Exodus 13, verse 21, it's not on your notes, it says this, by Day the Lord went ahead of them in the pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night in the pillar of fire to give them light. On your scripture, I mean, <laughs> the scripture on your notes, uh, it's up on the screen there, right? Yeah, will be. Out of uh, Isaiah chapter 4 verse 5 says this. Then the Lord will create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day and smoke and the shining of flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a canopy. Don't you like the word will? little bitty four-letter word, will. I like will. Anyway, so let's unpack this verse. This verse is set, it's, it's set in a prophetic portion of the book of Isaiah. It's actually from verse 2 down to like 7 or 9, and it's prophetic. It's actually talking about a branch. It's talking about Jesus. But anyway, so we'll step on from that, but just know that it's prophetic. And in it, the first, first, uh, uh, the first word of this verse we see is then. So it's written like in the past. It was written back then. But it's for the future. It's prophetic. It's for us. It's for today. It's for this morning. Next we see the Lord. That's the Lord all mighty, the almighty, all-sufficient. He's the, the leader of all the heavenly hosts. He's a mighty God. And then that little simple word, but most powerful, will. Because you see, it, it, it's, it's a promise from the most high God. It's not a maybe. It's not a, oh, I might. No, will. And then we read the word create. That's the same word create as is used in Genesis 1.1, where God said, let there be light, right? He said, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke it out of nothing. God created. It's that same word. For God created out of nothing the physical word. So the Lord God Almighty will create over the whole site of Mount Zion. Well, what's that? 
So Mount Zion is a type, if you will. It's the new Jerusalem. It's the heavenly city coming down. It's the invisible church. You'll see that it's us. The next verse on your notes there comes out of Psalms 125, verse 1. It says this. Those who trust, trust. Those who trust in the Lord, those who are believers, they're the true church. Those that trust in the Lord, they're as Mount Zion. There it is. We're as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. So God is creating over us the church, true believers, the assemblies. Our services. You know, it's wherever two or more are gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in the midst thereof. He's a covering over us. When we're there gathered in His name to lift Him up, to praise Him, to worship Him, to give Him adoration. He's in the midst thereof. He's present now. He's a present God. He is building over us His very presence. His presence settles over us. His presence is that that it's inhabiting our praise and worship, our study time. He's inhabiting it. He's dwelling with us at this moment. That same presence that went before the children of Israel in a, in a cloud, in a fire pillar, that same tangible presence is here this morning. It's the presence that filled the temple, filled the tabernacle, filled it so the, the priest couldn't even be standing. It's what we call the Shekinah glory. Shekinah. So that's a bullet point on your notes. Shekinah comes from the Hebrew verb meaning settle, inhabit, dwell. It's used a lot in the Old Testament scriptures. It literally means this, the dwelling or the presence of God with his people, you and me, the Shekinah glory. It's the presence of God. It's His covering. It's His sheltering. It's His protecting us when we're intimate with Him, when we're connecting with God. He's protecting our time with Him when we're basking in His presence. He's a covering over that, a protecting, which brings us to point number two. The canopy acts as a shelter for protection. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8, it says this, Then my favor will, there's that word, Then my favor will shine on you like the morning sun, and your wounds will be quickly healed. I will always be with you. What? To save you. My presence will protect you. Not just the front, not the rear, but on every side. He's an ever-presence. He's a covering over us. The Lord says, my presence will protect you on every side. A covering of shelter, security, a place of intimacy. Under his covering, we find a refuge, a safe haven. From all the stuff that goes on, all the battles that we're going through in the world, there's a safe place, a shelter in the midst of a storm that you can run into. It's the presence of the living God. Intimacy with Him. It's under this protection in the presence of the Lord where He begins to touch us. His healing hand reaches out to us. It's the place where the comforter comes and brings comfort to us. It's the place where those troublesome burdens are rolled away. They're removed. It's where we find rest for our soul. It's found there in His presence. 
It's where the healing starts. It's where our heart's cry finds answers in his presence. The next verse on your notes there comes out of uh, Isaiah chapter 4, 6. There will be a booth, and that word booth could be the same canopy or covering or tent. There is a booth for shade by day from the heat. Ever feel like you're in the fire? And for a refuge, a shelter from the storm and rain. So let's bring it home. Let's bring it a little bit closer because, again, we talk about corporate worship, but we also talk about the individual. Because the Lord covers us. He covers us individually. He covers us with His presence. Why? Because if you're a Christian, you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart. Things have become new. You know what you are? You're a tabernacle. What? You're a a house for God. He dwells within you. You're the very house of God. His very presence dwells in you. The living God has come to reside in your heart. The Holy Spirit lives within you. You're a presence carrier. Where you walk, you carry the Lord Jesus Christ. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Why? He's so far away. No! He lives in your heart. He's a present help. God doesn't want to stay in the external. God doesn't want to stay in your peripheral. God wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants to come into your heart. But he wants you to come into his presence and to dwell there with him. It's not Emmanuel. God with us, but it's God in us. It's God in us. He wants to move into our hearts. He wants to be in the most intimate place in the temple that he created, us. He wants to stay there. He wants to inhabit that place, place of worshiping him, being in his presence. We carry the Lord's glory. We carry him. Have you ever heard of the secret place? That leads us to point number three. Under the canopy is the secret place. It's on your notes, Psalms 18, verse 11. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of skies. And doesn't that sound like the cloud that goes before? The covering, the canopy, the Shekinah glory, his presence. Then we come into, as we're intimate with him, as we go from the outer to the inner to the Holy of Holies, that's the secret place. The secret place is a place that we come face to face with the living God, heart to heart with our Savior. You know, it's like this. It's like Clark Kent, the mild-mannered reporter. And he goes into, what, the old uh, uh, phone booth. Sorry, millennials and those of you who, you know, you don't know phone booth. But phone booth, you saw it on the movie, right? He opens the door of the phone booth. He goes in as Clark Kent. And what? He changes. He comes busting out. Woo! Superman, right? Superman. Wow. That's us. No, you, you don't get it. That's us. When we go into the intimate secret place, we come out changed. (laughs) 
So we move past the cares of this world, the noise, the clamor, the distractions. We move past that. We don't want to be part of the crowd. We don't want to be out in the world. We move past that. We move into the outer court. There we leave our sin, our shame at the altar. We confess our sins. It's there we find his forgiveness. And we move into the inner court. The inner court where we lift up our prayers, where we lift up praise, where we make our declarations. God, how great and mighty you are. We worship you. We make declarations. The Bible says this, that our prayers and those declarations and our worship are like incense that rise up into the throne room of God. That's in the inner court that that takes place. How many of you are stuck in the inner court? Some of you haven't even got there. You're still in the outer court. and Maybe you're not even in the temple of all. So we press into the Holy of Holies. The very presence of God. The still quiet place. Well, we don't have words. <laughs> Your presence, Lord. That's the place where God can make deep changes. It's where we're strengthened. In our inner man. It's where we find the power to bear much fruit. It's where our character is changed. We become more like Jesus. It's where we find spiritual rest within the storm. Where no matter what's going outside, we're at rest and at peace. It's that place. It's the place of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. It's the place where Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. It's the place where Jesus got the strength to carry your sin and my sin to a rugged cross, to be nailed to it, to shed his blood. That kind of intimate fellowship that he had with the Father is available for you and me so that I can bear my cross. You can bear your cross. You can become like Jesus. More than conquerors in Christ. Well, how can we say that? I'm not conquering anything. Are you intimate with Jesus Christ? Have you moved into the presence of the holy, righteous God? Are you intimate with him? Or are you in the outer court somewhere? It's there where deep touches deep. It's not peripheral. It's not surface. It's where he touches our heart. But it's where we come to the place of reaching his heart. I love the picture of John. That he rested his head on his Savior's chest. That he felt the very heartbeat of the one that would give his life for him. Jesus says this, I'm not a respecter of persons. There isn't something like, oh, pastor, he could get there. Jesus has made the way for all of us to get there. He's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't love me or pastors or the Pope or whoever more than he loves you. He sent his son for you that you might enter into his presence where there's fullness of joy. <laughs> Whoa. The secret place. So how do we reach the secret place? It's 
one thing. Surrender. Surrender. Oh, I surrender this. That's not surrender. Oh, I give you that. No. Surrender. Surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Surrender to the will of God. Lord Jesus, not Terry's will, but your will be done. Be done in and through my life. God is good. Well, I brought uh, with me um, this morning a talit. It's a bullet point uh, there on your notes, kind of explains it a little bit. A talif, it says, a prayer shawl is a fringed shawl traditionally worn by Jewish men at prayer. Origin from the rabbinical Hebrew talit, from the biblical Hebrew til, til el, which means to cover. Cover, canopy, tent, tabernacle. I brought this as uh, just like a little uh, when we enter into praise and worship, when our condition of our heart is right, we are the temple of God. And we come into his presence, and his presence covers us. His presence covers us. It covers us. It's a protection. When I come into the presence and the intimacy of God, it's just me and God. I'm in his presence. There's no outside distraction. It's me and the Lord. So this talif, it's like the temple. It's like the tabernacle. But you know, God's presence, whether we, we do a physical thing with this or we're here, His presence is available to us. His presence is a covering over us. When we come into a place of intimacy with Him, when we block out the world, when we come into His presence, when we seek only His face, He's present with us. He's present with us. The worship team has come up. The secret place. The last scripture on your notes there this morning is this. But you, when you pray, go into your room. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. And when you have shut your door, when you shut your door, pray to your Father, who is in where? The secret place. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. He will reward you openly. The secret place. It's when we move from the world to the inner court and we deal with our sin. Then we move into the that inner, I say the outer, outer. Then we go into the inner court where we lift up praise and worship and adoration. We make our request known to God. But we don't stop there. We press in to the presence of God. But Lord, we desire you, not stuff. You've already cleansed me. But Lord, I desire you. And he meets us in that place, in the secret place.